In today's video, I'm going over everything you need to know about the Vanguard High Dividend Yield ETF, VYM, listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Hi everyone, and welcome to the series on Exchange Traded Funds, or ETF Investing, where I look into specific ETFs and show everything you need to know about the product offering before buying shares of the fund. ETFs are personally my favourite way to passively invest, as it takes the stress and worry out of stock market investing, which can be very volatile with wild price swings holding individual stocks. We will go over the ETF fact sheet, including the management fee, the index the ETF tracks, dividend yield, payment frequency and the fund's performance. I will also go over the top 10 holdings in the fund, as these typically make up the largest portion of the weightings and resulting performance of the ETF overall. It is always crucial to understand what you actually own in these ETFs before buying them. If there's any ETFs you are interested in and would like me to make a video on, write it down in the comment section below. VYM is an ETF provided by Vanguard, who own and operate the fund. Vanguard are the ones who actually own the underlying shares in the individual companies. So when we buy shares in the ETF, we buy from Vanguard, who continually issue new shares in an open-end fund, and not the individual companies inside the ETF. Now, VYM aims to track the performance of the FTSE High Dividend Yield Index, which measures the investment return of common stocks of companies characterised by high dividend yields in the US stock market. The index and fund provides a convenient way to track the performance of stocks that are forecasted to have above average dividend yields, and is tilted towards providing investors with a source of consistent dividend income. Stick around to the end of the video where we'll see how good the performance and returns of VYM have been over time. To find the ETF in your brokerage account, you will need to type in the ticket code VYM to bring up the options to buy or sell shares in the fund. It pays distributions, which are dividends from the ETF, four times a year with a yield of 2.7% and has a management expense ratio, or MER, of 0.06% per year. So for every $10,000 invested, it will cost $6 per year in fees. And this isn't a bill you have to pay straight away. It is automatically deducted from how much money you have invested in the ETF. So you're never really noticing being paid or taken out of your brokerage account. Since this ETF tracks large US dividend companies, it is heavily tilted towards financial companies. The largest portion of the fund at 21% is in financials, followed by consumer staples at 13%, healthcare at 13% and industrials at 10%. Material and energy companies make up the smallest percentage of the fund, under 5% and 6% respectively. Dividend ETFs offer a number of attractive characteristics. Most notably, dividend ETFs can save investors a lot of time and potential headaches compared to owning individual stocks. The majority of dividend ETFs hold between 50 and several hundred companies and are well diversified across a number of industries. Purchasing shares of most dividend ETFs provides instant diversification to a portfolio providing an investor with some protection against being overly exposed to one particular sector that falls out of favour. More importantly, dividend ETF investors do not need to worry much about monitoring their holdings, because many ETFs are diversified across hundreds of companies. In other words, no single company is likely going to make or break the performance of an ETF, so there's practically no need to stay up to date on news about individual companies owned inside the fund. The consistent cash flow from dividend ETFs can also provide more ease for investors instead of solely relying on the stock price. The bulk of stock market returns have come from dividend reinvestment, leading to the compounding growth over time, which is a great way to build wealth and more passive income. If you're enjoying this style of video, feel free to give it a like to let me know and subscribe for more. Now when purchasing shares in an ETF, I like to have a basic understanding of the top 10 holdings, as these companies will have most of my money allocated to them and they will end up driving the bulk of the fund's performance. So we'll quickly go over which companies are in the ETF's top holdings and what they do to make money. Intel is an American multinational corporation and technology company headquartered in California. Intel was founded in 1968 by semiconductor pioneers Gordon Moore and Robert Noyce. It is the world's largest semiconductor chip manufacturer by revenue and is a developer of the x86 series of microprocessors, the processors found in most personal computers. Intel makes money by supplying microprocessors for computer system manufacturers, such as Lenovo, HP, and Dell. Intel also manufactures motherboard chipsets, network interface controllers, integrated circuits, flash memory, and GPUs. Cisco is an American multinational technology conglomerate headquartered in California. Cisco Systems was founded in December 1984 by Leonard Bosak and Sandy Lerner, two Stanford University computer scientists who had been instrumental in connecting computers at Stanford. The company makes money by manufacturing and selling networking hardware, software, telecommunications equipment, video conferencing, and other high technology services and products around the world, predominantly to other businesses. 
Verizon is an American multinational telecommunications conglomerate headquartered in New York City. Verizon is one of the world's leading providers of communications, information and entertainment products and services to consumers, businesses and government agencies. Verizon offers voice, data and video services and solutions on its wireless and wireline networks. The offerings meet the customer demand for mobility, reliable network connectivity, security and control. Verizon makes money by selling wireless and wireline services to retail and business consumers throughout the US. ExxonMobil is an American multinational oil and gas corporation headquartered in Texas. It is the largest direct descendant of John D. Rockefeller Standard Oil and was formed on November 30, 1999 by the merger of Exxon, formerly the Standard Oil Company of New Jersey, and Mobil, formerly the Standard Oil Company of New York. ExxonMobil's primary brands are ExxonMobil, Esso, and ExxonMobil Chemical. Exxon is one of the biggest oil companies in the world and primarily makes money from exploration and production of crude oil along with natural gas. It manufactures, trades and transports crude oil, natural gas, petroleum products and petrochemicals around the world in both upstream and downstream oil and gas segments, plus a chemical segment. Comcast is an American telecommunications conglomerate headquartered in Pennsylvania. It is the second largest broadcasting and cable television company in the world by revenue, behind AT&T the largest pay TV company and the largest cable TV company, along with the largest home internet service provider in the US. As the parent company of the international media company NBC Universal, Comcast is a producer of feature films and television programs intended for theatre exhibition and over-the-air and cable television broadcast. Comcast owns and operates the Xfinity Residential Cable Communication subsidiary, broadcast network channels including NBC, MSNBC and CNBC, among many others. It also owns a film studio, Universal Pictures, streaming service Peacock, DreamWorks, and Universal Animation Studios. The company makes its money through distribution channels, advertising, and licensing content through its many media avenues. Procter & Gamble is an American multinational consumer goods corporation, headquartered in Ohio, founded in 1837 by William Procter and James Gamble. It specializes in a wide range of personal health, personal care, and hygiene products. These products are organised into several segments, including beauty, grooming, healthcare, fabric and home care, baby, feminine and family care. The company makes money by selling its products in approximately 180 countries and territories around the world. Home Depot is the largest home improvement retailer in the US, supplying tools, construction products and services. The company is headquartered in Georgia. It operates many big box format stores across the US, including the District of Columbia, Guam, Puerto Rico and the US Virgin Islands all 10 provinces in Canada, and the 31 Mexican states and Mexico City. MRO company Interline Brands, now the Home Depot Pro, is also owned by Home Depot, with 70 distribution centres across the US. Home Depot makes money by selling home improvement products and services to do-it-yourself customers, do-it-for-me customers, and professional customers through its stores. Bank of America is a multinational investment bank and financial service holding company headquartered in North Carolina. Founded in San Francisco, Bank of America was formed through Nations Bank's acquisition of Bank America in 1998. It is the second largest banking institution in the US, after JP Morgan Chase, and the eighth largest bank in the world. Bank of America is one of the big four banking institutions in the US. It services approximately 10% of all American bank deposits in direct competition with JP Morgan Chase, Citigroup, and Wells Fargo. Its primary financial services revolve around commercial banking, wealth management, and investment banking. It makes money by lending to retail customers and businesses, along with insurance, credit, and access card facilities. Johnson & Johnson is an American multinational corporation founded in 1886 that develops and sells medical devices, pharmaceutical, and consumer packaged goods. Most of Johnson & Johnson's total revenue comes from its pharmaceutical segment. Medical devices refer to sales of devices for orthopedic surgery, cardiovascular, and vision care. Its most well-known consumer products are the Band-Aid line of bandages, Tylenol medications, Johnson's baby products, and Neutrogena skin and beauty products. J.P. Morgan Chase & Co. is an American multinational investment bank and financial services holding company, headquartered in New York City. The company makes money by providing services including consumer banking, investment banking, commercial banking, and asset management for individuals, corporations, institutions, and governments globally. Now, ETFs are considered to be low-risk investments because they are low-cost and hold a basket of stocks or other securities, increasing diversification. For most individual investors, ETFs represent an ideal type of asset which builds a diversified portfolio. Still, unique risks can arise from holding ETFs, 
as well as other special considerations paid to taxation depending on the type of ETF. Since inception, VYM has had an average annualised return of 8.6% before tax and a cumulative return of 238%, which goes to show the power of dividend reinvestment and compound interest, keeping the money invested growing faster over longer periods of time. Now, of course, past performance is no guarantee of future performance, but it's always a good sign of consistently improving business fundamentals, continually driving each individual stock higher within the ETF. I prefer to look at the cumulative returns as it includes the dividends paid to shareholders, which should always be included as we're getting some value back, plus with the dividends reinvested, this is what provides the compounding effect, exponentially increasing our returns the longer we have our money invested in the fund. This is the sort of approach I take investing for the very long term using ETFs, and one day live off the investment portfolio as passive income through either dividends or selling down small parts of the position, but maintaining the bulk of the capital. If you want to see how these companies make money in detail, watch the playlist shown in the end screen. Let me know in the comments what you think of this ETF and whether you currently own any shares or plan to buy. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more personal finance and stock market investing videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.